welcome once again to another lesson and uh, today we are going to learn about the differences in political parties and why in Kenya political parties are basically the same. Majority of Kenyans cannot differentiate the big difference between, for example, the Orange Democratic Party, the Wiper Democratic Party, the Ford Kenya, Ford Asili, Jubilee. The differences between these parties are more towards the politicians who lead them, so that the parties are identified more with politicians instead of being identified more with ideologies. So the purpose of this lesson is to enable you, the viewer, to understand why is it that in Kenya political parties seem to be the same? What makes them the same and why do we say, ideologically speaking, that there is no political opposition in Kenya? To understand this, we'll have to go back to the board. And uh, the starting point is the ideological compass. The ideological compass shows us the different extremities in political ideologies. Mainly, in the advanced societies, political parties are more identified with their ideologies. And there are several ideologies out there. There are ideologies, for instance, like anarchism, autocracy, populism, capitalism, then there is nationalism, there is Marxism, communism, you know, libertarianism. All these are ideologies. There are so many. But we are not concerned with all those ideologies. We will be concerned with just a few of them to help us understand today's lesson. So, when we look at the political compass, towards the right wing, which is represented by the letter R, is what is called capitalism. While towards the left is what is called socialism. And in the extreme right here is where we get imperialism, if we move towards capitalism. So, imperialism now is more or less the end when you come to the capitalist side, while when you go to the extreme end of socialism, you end up with communism. In the middle, that is here, that is where we have the centrist, the, 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 the central parties, because they are more or less in the center. They borrow ideas from capitalism, they borrow ideas from socialism or from, from, from the left. Now, when we look at the situation in Kenya, majority of the parties in Kenya do not have ideologies. I, the word ideology comes from the word idea. A political party should represent a set of ideas that it would like to sell to the people in order to change the politics with the aim of changing the living conditions of the people of Kenya. Parties in Kenya do not have political ideologies. If we might define them being closest to any ideology, then they are more or less populist parties. They believe in populism, which goes with opportunism. These are all isms, but they don't represent any set of ideas that can be sold to run a government. So the problem in Kenya is that majority of political parties can roughly be identified on the right side of the ideological divide. That is, here is where you find Ford Kenya, here is where you find ODM, here is where you find the uh, Wiper Party, here is where you find uh, for Nasili. Here is where you find the Jubilee. Mention any political party. You find them here. But these parties do not practice capitalism as it is known. 
they don't even talk about capitalism which we are going to you know discuss in a future lesson majority of them can be said to be on the right now if a party practices ideas that are on the center of the right wing then we talk about being in the center right parties ideologies like liberalism they are in the right liberalism so if somebody says that i'm a liberal is more or less on on the right if somebody says that is an anarchist anarchists are more drawn towards the left wing of politics this is where you find socialists this is where you find uh, communists in the extreme end here this is where you find uh, the syndicalists they are all here on the left so in a political situation such as kenya parties could be opposing one another on the basis of capitalism that is there are different political parties but they have different ideas on how capitalism can be implemented in the same sense parties could also oppose themselves on the left wing on the basis that they are all on the left but within the left wing there are also different ideologies and different ideas on how society should be run the left could be competing against the right and the right could be competing against the left the right could be competing against the left so in this kind of situation we have an ideological opposition in the sense that a party that believes that capitalism is good in Kenya finds opposition from a party that says capitalism is not good in Kenya socialism is good in Kenya or we should practice anarchism in Kenya or we should practice syndicalism in Kenya they are all on the left now the problem in Kenya is that majority of the political parties find themselves on this side even though they don't profess capitalism this is fundamentally why parties in Kenya are the same so when you talk about you know political parties in Kenya and you ask them what is your ideology they have no answer now they have no answer because they are not capitalists as we understand it and they are not socialists as we understand it what we have is a bunch of populist opportunist parties that do not even have capitalist political programs and this explains why these parties are more or less the same here we are not going to go into the difference between capitalism and socialism that is another lesson coming in the future here is just to mention that the key difference between these parties is that they are mainly politically ideologically bankrupt now if we may relate this similarity back to our class system you find that majority of these right wing parties are mainly being led by members of the ruling class you find kalonzo musyoka you find musalia mudavadi is leading a party there you find raila odinga is leading a party there you find uh, who else moses wetangula from the ruling class leading parties there you you don't find you know members of these other classes heading any political parties because these guys don't have a party in kenya of their own that identifies with themselves that identifies with what they believe in that identifies in their ideals and that identifies with their conditions they don't have now these parties mainly they are there to represent the ruling class but for these parties to get to power they have to come back to these guys here they have to convince the peasant the lumpens the unemployed the students the proletariat the workers the middle class they have to, to convince all these people to vote for them and you are voting for them on the basis of populism populism and what is called opportunism which does not need any definition
opportunism. Then these guys, they vote for these guys to come to power. Now, the difference is that while majority of the right-wing political parties usually, you know, they are usually dominated by members of the ruling class and they usually appeal to this group of people, the left-wing parties mainly, they, they are parties that are constituted by these classes. These classes are the leaders of these parties. The idea is to set up a party that represents the people, not a party that represents the ruling class. Now, these parties, they tend to mobilize these other classes. Then they set up a party. And then they call it the Kenya Socialist Party. Or it can be called Kenya Red Alliance. Now, if you set up this kind of party to represent these people, the parties are usually organized in a way that the leaders of the party are drawn from this group of people. Leaders from the ruling class are not allowed to be leaders in the socialist party, for instance, assuming that, you know, we are talking about capitalism and socialism, despite the existence of all those other ideologies, which are also in the left. Like anarchists, they believe that, you know, there, there should be no leader, you know, the communities should organize themselves and, you know, run society. That is what they believe in. The syndicalists who are also on the left, they believe that, you know, workers should, should form, should set up syndicalist networks that can form political parties and run society. Now, socialists mainly, while setting up parties of these individuals, they normally prefer that the leaders of these parties, they come from different, you know, classes, but the top leaders who take charge are the working class. The working class takes charge because they are the most advanced members of these oppressed classes. They are more advanced, for instance, than the peasants, because the level at which they understand the production of wealth is so advanced. You know, these are all, the, the, the peasants are all workers. We have proletariat workers who work in the Shambas, the Shamba boys. They are called, you know, the agricultural proletariat. They are all workers. But when we talk about being advanced in the sense that they are advanced in ideas and their association with the, the production system makes them more advanced to the lumpens. For instance, a factory worker, you know, who is a proletariat, knows exactly how the production goes on the line. So they are already involved in the production of wealth that each and every party would like to control. Politics is about wealth distribution. Wealth is already there. It is being produced by all these people. But the problem is this ruling class with their own parties, they sit by themselves in parliament and decide the fate of all these guys. But in the majority of cases, these guys are normally the losers after you take them to parliament. So the difference between these parties and the left-wing parties is the leadership. The left-wing parties are never led by the bourgeois. They are never led by the ruling class. They are mainly led by the lower classes. And the agenda is normally to put workers to power. So when you look at Kenya, parties are basically the same because majority of them are here. They are on the right wing of the political divide. And within this right wing, they are not even practicing the right wing ideas. They are more ethnic than capitalist. That is why we don't even talk about pure capitalism in Kenya. We talk about ethnic politics. So they are not even at the, at the populist, opportunist level per se. They are at the ethnic level. They are not at the ideological level because they don't profess capitalism. They don't profess, you know, the open market system. Although in their program they talk about open market. They are ashamed of saying that we are capitalists because capitalism is associated with exploitation.
So when you look at any political party in Kenya, one, it's most likely to be on the right wing of the political di divide. And two, within the right wing, it is most likely to be either on the populist side of the right or on the opportunist side of the right. They don't call themselves liberals. They don't call themselves conservatives, you know. They are just political parties. They are just ODM, Ford Kenya, Ford Asili, with their ethnic leaders. So the argument is that as long as we are in this state, political parties are not dealing with ideas. And as long as we are not dealing with ideas, as long as there is no alternative, Kenyans will continue to follow these guys, you know, members of the ruling class, these people. They will continue to follow members of the ruling class while the ruling class will continue to exploit support from these guys to try and get into government to serve the interest of the ruling class. So for a change to be there, ideological parties must enter into the scene. Even if they are all capitalist, they should show us the different shades of they represent. If they are socialists, they should show us the different shades of socialism they represent. If they are ideological, we, should, we need to have socialists giving their ideas on how society should be run and compete with the capitalists. In Kenya, these guys dominate. They are the ones who are, you know, dominating the scene. And this explains why they continue to stick to ethnicity, which I've already explained in another lesson, how the political parties are, you know, benefiting from recruiting members of these classes from different ethnic groups to join them. So today's lesson is mainly centered on the need to have political parties that are ideological. Because an ideology is about an idea. An ideological parties do not focus on individuals. So that even if the individual is not there, the idea remains for members of the party to follow. Not that if, you know, one member of a political party disappears, then that is the end of the party, you know. If one member of the party, the leader, you know, dies, then that is the end of the party. Why? Because the party is not built on ideas. It's built on personalities. It's built on ego worship. It's built on individualism. It is not built on ideas on how to change Kenya. We'll discuss these ideas in the coming videos but in the meantime you need to understand as the viewer that the political parties in Kenya are the same because they are not ideological they don't represent ideas they represent individuals and these individuals base their politics on ethnicity and this ethnic politics is the root cause of Kenya's problems, because without discussing ideas, we cannot progress as a nation. We are stuck with uh, handshakes, we are stuck with ethnic alliances, we are stuck with political parties that do not show the way forward on how to end tribalism, you know, by practicing class politics. They have no ideas on how to end unemployment, no ideas on how to create jobs. They have no ideas on how to build a vibrant society and how to create a condition in which every Kenyan can live as an equal human being. It is a society that is based on wealth grabbing. It is a society that has, you know, converted politics into business. It is a society that your ethnicity defines your political parties. This should come to an end. Your political party should be defined by your ideas, not by your ethnic group. And because these parties are not in a position to put forward any ideas, they are ideologically bankrupt. And they will continue to exploit the fact that there are no ideologies to continue to mobilize on an ethnic scale and they will also continue to exploit the ignorance within the classes to divide them along ethnic lines. Somebody comes and says, Sisi Waluya, we should be like this. 
Sisi wajaluo, we should be like this. Sisi wakikuyu, we should be like this. Sisi wanakost, we should be like this. Sisi tunatoka kisi, we should be like this. This kind of parties are getting us nowhere. It is time to discuss what? Ideas. And you can't discuss ideas without political ideologies. Political ideologies, you are either on the right wing of the political divide or you are on the left wing. This is how I, I advanced societies have managed to advance. So that when you go to a political debate or when you go to an election, you are not just going to elect an individual. You are going to elect a political party that represents your ideas. It might take time. Introducing ideas in Kenyan politics must, might, might take time. But it has to be done. Somebody has to start from somewhere. If you are going to liberate yourselves, if you are going to find a solution to the crisis in Kenya, that solution is not on ethnic parties. That solution lies with ideas. If you are thinking the capitalist way, then tell us how capitalism can advance society. Tell us how capitalism can solve the problem of unemployment. We have been running on the basis of a capitalist society since 1963 when Kenya gained its independence. And the more time goes, the worse the situation becomes. Which means that capitalism is not working. If you are a socialist, tell us how you think socialism is going to solve the problem of unemployment, how it is going to create jobs for the youth, how it is going to address the crisis in the medical, you know, healthcare system, how it is going to address the crisis in the education system, how it is going to address the question of crime, how it is going to address the question of poverty, how it is going to address the question of wealth creation, and all these issues. These issues have to be discussed at the idea level. And you cannot begin to discuss them when your point of departure is that wewe ni mjaluo, lazima ufuate luo party. Wewe ni mkikuyu, lazima ufuate huru kenyata. Wewe ni mloya, lazima ufuate mudavadi. It's not gonna work. In your lifetime, in my lifetime, it's not gonna work. So, the coming generation has to begin to think about this. Ethnicity is not leading Kenya anywhere. It is time for us to go back to school and look at the blackboard. We are here to teach you. This is part of the revolutionary teaching. It is part of politics. It is nothing to do with the, a lecture hall, just as I said before. I'm not trying to give you a degree in politics. This is pure information simplified. Without ideologies, we are going nowhere. With ethnic parties, we are going nowhere. And therefore, it is high time we as Kenyans began to think about the left or the right. It is not a mistake to be on the left or to be on the right. So nobody should victimize you that you are a capitalist or you are an anarchist or you are a communist or you are, uh, you know, a, a liberalist. Libertarians. Nobody should, you know, try to victimize you. Why? Because you have the right to be capitalistic and you have the right to be socialistic. The thing is, at the moment, that is not the level at which we are discussing politics because the parties we have out there are not discussing anything here. If we had a party that comes and says, well, this is our idea of capitalism. We are on the right wing, we are liberals, and we think that this is how we can change this society. Then we listen to you. The socialists come, make their explanation, we listen. Then when you go to vote, you are voting for ideas. We are in a dilemma because we are being lied to. An illusion has been created that Kenya has different parties, while the reality is that these parties are fundamentally the same. We have been lied to that we have different ideas represented by di these different parties, but the truth is we have ethnic chieftains, 
that are fighting for their own individual interest using ethnic parties while at the same time projecting these parties as mass parties. So when these parties form ethnic alliances, they are led by the ruling class, they come with different political parties, they form alliances, they call it NASA, they get to these people to elect them to parliament and to give them power, and then they begin to practice the same, same ethnicity in government. This is what we are saying. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that uh, this video has given you an idea about the different political parties and why political parties in Kenya are the same. We have had other videos before that have talked about the different classes in Kenya and uh, how class politics is organized in Kenya. We will continue with these lessons because it is necessary at this point in time that we try to break from our ethnic politics and to do that we will not be able to succeed without new political ideas, without discussing ideas. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. I'm Okoth Osewe, your comrade and your instructor.